offer an opening statement? Yes, yeah, certainly a, a heartbreaking loss for our young ladies. So that our, our effort intensity was really good. We just couldn't get stops down the stretch, and, and that really hurt us at the same time. I think they, they made some shots that were contested shots, and we had some shots that didn't go in. So made a couple, like obviously one more play, and it's not just the last play of the game, but uh, certainly think our young ladies have earned an opportunity to keep playing and playing the NCAA tournament. Uh, with the resume that we have, finishing fourth place or tied for fourth place in the Big 12, I think our young ladies deserve an opportunity to keep playing and keep playing in the big dance. If you have questions for J.J. Quinterly, please raise your hand, and one of our, mac our media ambassadors will bring you a microphone. Please state your name, your organization, and you can fire away with your question. Uh, JJ, Jared McDonald with the Charleston Gazette Mail. I guess that fourth quarter, what did you see that um, you know went wrong for you guys and, and right for them? Um, just like Coach said, we didn't stop them from scoring the ball in the fourth. And honestly, I mean, we can't go back and change anything, but I'm sure everybody wants to, but we can't. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Barry Trammell with the Oklahoman. Uh, JJ, I've never seen a ball stay on the rim like that that long. What what was going through your mind when you saw that ball? Look like it's going to fall out, and then it stopped, and it fell back in. I was hoping it was going to fall out, honestly. But I mean, um, I think our girls sweat hard otherwise. But I hope we get to go to NCAA. So yeah. Uh, Tanner Lambert, U92, uh, Student Radio at WVU. Um, JJ, Maddie had another 20-point game, you know, and her individual effort all season, but especially over these last four games where you guys have won three in a row coming into it. For her, uh, if this is it, what are you guys going to say to her and send her off with? Um, Maddie's been with West Virginia for a long time, as y'all can see, and just her going out like this. It hurts me, and I know it hurts her so much more. But just say to her that we love her. We will always be here for her with anything. Kevin Kinder with the Blue and Gold News. JJ, how tough is it to have a cramp in that situation? not be in the game at that point. It looked like that's probably the toughest thing, you know, for you to get over and take in this game. Um, I mean, cramps and injuries and stuff like that are going to come. I try to get back in as soon as possible. But, I mean, I know my team. I, I believe in my team. So I knew my team could withstand the storm and get through it. But, I mean, the ball went in, so. Any other questions for JJ? JJ, thank you for your participation. You. You're released to the locker room. The West Virginia locker room is open. Now questions for Coach Plitzu White. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, coach, uh, kind of going off of the question about Maddie, I believe she surpassed the school's all-time minutes played mark. I guess what can you say about her effort down the stretch, not just today, but um, you know the three games leading into this? Well, Maddie's a young lady who not only plays her, her heart out, but she's employing her teammates. She's doing a great job during timeouts, you know, on the court, just doing a great job of trying to lead us in every way possible. So, you know, again, I, I really believe that our young ladies have done what they need to do to keep playing and have an opportunity to play on, on the biggest stage of college women's basketball. And so, you know, our, our goal, our hope is to send her out that way. Coach, it looked like Oklahoma State was able to get into the lane pretty early, pretty well in the first half. Did you make an adjustment to take that away in the second half and then on the last play, did they do anything different or just a play that they executed a little better? Well, I think they, they had stretches where they were able to get to the rim, obviously, with some, uh, some drill penetration, kind of with some ball screen scenarios. And I thought, you know, we, we, we had an option we could have followed down the stretch. The hard part about that is if you put yourself in a spot where it becomes a, an intentional foul where you're leeching, reaching, lunging, those kind of things. So, you know, opted to play it straight up and, and come over and lend some assistance and obviously needed to lend more assistance on the last play. Third, third row, interior aisle. I was going to ask you about that. You guys had a foul to give, so right. you, you made the choice to. We made the choice, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, we did. You know, it's, it's something that, you know, I, I think you can go back and you can play it a million different ways, but the hard part is if all of a sudden you're trying to go foul at the end and you don't get it, now it's a clean look at the basket. This one was a contested, you know, shot at that point in time, so. Second row. Uh, Coach, no, Naomi Elnada's a um, player you're familiar with. You held her in check last time, five points, and I believe she had um, about half of her 16 in the fourth quarter. Did you notice anything different from her in the fourth, or is that just a good player going out and making plays? She is a great player and, and is a player who can make a lot of things happen for him. I, you know, I think she's someone who can really get to the rim. I, I thought the, the rebound that, that Collins got down the stretch was a big-time rebound for him, you know, and we had kids that were trying to go get it, and she, she just jumped over the top of the crowd and it made something happen. But uh, I thought that she, you know, Naomi Elnaz is a young lady who can score it on kick-out opportunities. She's someone who can drill penetrate. She can get you off balance and kind of step through one of her kind of go-to type of scenario. So, you know, I think they just, they made a, one more play down the stretch than we did. Third row interior aisle. Yeah, M.A. Vopel, uh, ESPN.com. Coach, I know this is a, a tough time to talk about this, but it's been a, a, a cool season for you. I mean, your first season in Morgantown. I wonder if you could sort of talk about what it's meant to you, um, the buy-in from the players into your system, and, and like you said, hopefully going forward to the NCAA tournament. Right. I think certainly when you look at how much we have grown from the beginning of not only the season, but the beginning of the Big 12 season to now, uh, I just give our young ladies and our staff a lot of credit for continuing to work and to grind. And, you know, we're, we're a team that has to be incredibly good defensively to give ourselves a chance. We just, we do. And unfortunately, that didn't work for us down the stretch. We didn't get enough stops in, in the fourth quarter. You know, but I think our young ladies probably exceeded a lot of, a lot of expectations. And I think their, their ability, their want, their, their connectiveness, all those types of things continued to grow and will continue to grow throughout the season yet because I, I just don't believe that we're done. And I don't believe that our ladies should be done. I just, I don't. I think to finish 10-8 and eight in the Big 12 in a, a great conference, to finish the year, I think we, in the regular season, obviously not this game, but finished, we won five of our last seven and upset two top 25 teams, AP top 25 teams. And, you know, to, I think there are at least six wins that we had of the of teams that are projected to be in the NCAA tournament. So I just I believe that we have we should have an opportunity. If not, that's going to be really tough for the Big 12. That's that's not only tough for our program, that's really tough for the Big 12 if we don't have a chance to keep playing in the big dance. Coach Blitzaway, thank you for your time. Right, thank you. West Virginia locker room is open.